Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Let's Shoot Accountancy. As we are finished with all the leverage ratios covering capital structure ratios and coverage ratios, in our previous videos, we are now going to dive into a new section of ratios, which is activity ratios. We shall begin with an overview of activity ratios and then move on to understanding and analyzing some of the important activity ratios that is total assets turnover ratio, fixed assets and current assets turnover ratio, capital turnover ratio, and working capital turnover ratio with examples. But before we go ahead, if you are new to our channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for more such videos. And do check out our Let's Shoot website for online learning courses at very affordable prices. So friends, let's first understand what are the activity ratios. Activity ratios, also termed as efficiency or performance ratios, which indicate the efficiency with which the capital employed is rotated in the business. That is, how efficiently a business is managing and utilizing its available resources to generate the maximum possible revenue by comparing the sales figure with its assets. So these are also called as asset management ratios or turnover ratios. These ratios are generally expressed in times. Now can you tell us whether the higher ratio would be better or the lower activity ratio is better? Now, since these ratios indicate how optimally the company is using its resources to earn the revenue, a higher ratio would be considered the better. Friends, the activity ratios are useful to compare to competing businesses within the same industry to determine how a particular company is performing compared to the other. Or they may be used to monitor a company's fiscal progress over a period of time. So we hope now you all must have got the basic idea as to what are the activity ratios, right? Let's move further and understand as well as analyze some of the different types of activity ratios with examples that will help us to know the ratios better. First, total assets turnover ratio. This measures the efficiency with which the firm uses its total assets to generate revenue. Now, as the name suggests, it is calculated by dividing net sales by the average total assets. Here, the net sales are the amount of revenue generated after deducting sales return, sales discount, and sales allowances, if any. And the average total assets is the average of total assets at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. In case the average total assets figure is not available, then consider only the amount of total assets at the end of the year. Let's take an example to understand better. This is an extract of income statement of Alpha Company and this is the balance sheet as on 31st March 2022. From this, we will calculate the total assets turnover ratio. The formula is net sales divided by total assets. Here, the net sales figure is 1,50,000 and total assets are 2 lakhs. So, we get the total assets turnover ratio of 0.75 times. This means 0.75 sales are generated by every currency of asset invested in the business. Generally, the higher the asset turnover ratio, the more efficient a company is at generating revenue from its total assets. Whereas, a low asset turnover ratio indicates that the company is not efficiently using its assets to generate revenue. The optimum ratio though varies from one industry to other depending upon the volume of sales and asset base. There can be some industries that are more capital intensive than others and in that case, they tend to report a lower ratio. So it is always better to compare the ratios of the companies in the same industry to derive any conclusion. Next, moving on to the fixed assets turnover ratio. This measures the efficiency with which the firm uses its fixed assets to generate revenue. It is generally used by analysts to measure operating performance. It is calculated by dividing net sales by the net fixed assets. So what are the net fixed assets? Yes, it is the cost of fixed assets less accumulated depreciation. Let's calculate this using the same example of Alpha Company. Net sales are 1,50,000 and net fixed assets are 1,20,000. That is 80,000 of land and building plus 40,000 of plant and machinery. This gives us the fixed assets turnover ratio of 1.25 times. A high fixed assets turnover ratio indicates efficient utilization of fixed assets in generating sales. From an investor's point of view, it helps them to measure an approximate return on their investment, especially in manufacturing industry where the companies have huge investment 
in property plant and equipment lenders can also use this ratio to make sure that the company produces enough revenue from a new piece of equipment to pay back the loan they used to purchase it the comparison of fixed assets turnover ratio over a period of time indicates whether the investment in fixed assets has been judicious or not also do note that sometimes a company whose plant and machinery are old may show a higher fixed asset turnover ratio than the company which has purchased them recently since if the assets are old then their values would be lower due to accumulated depreciation on the same compared to the newly purchased fixed asset so it is advisable not to rely only on one ratio but to compare and analyze other ratios as well for any decision making Let's move further and understand what is net assets turnover ratio. This ratio indicates the firm's ability to generate sales per currency of long-term investments and how efficiently the company is utilizing its capital employed. Can you now tell us what would be the formula for this? Yes. It is net sales divided by net assets. Net assets can be calculated as total assets minus current liabilities. or fixed assets plus net current assets that is current assets minus current liability since the net assets figure is equal to capital employed this ratio can also be termed as capital turnover ratio and here we can use capital employed figure instead of net assets which is total of share capital read in earnings and long term borrowings it is also a general measure of level of capital investment required in an industry in order to generate sales let's calculate this using the same example here the net sales are 150000 how much would be the net assets so it is fixed assets plus current assets minus current liabilities amounting to 150000 or we can even consider capital employed instead of net assets which will also be the same 150000 and the net assets turnover ratio comes to 1 higher the ratio more efficient is the utilization of owners and long term borrowed funds the target capital turnover ratio varies from industry to industry for example it would be high in service industry where the amount of capital employed or net assets are comparatively lower and the ratio would be much lower in more asset intensive businesses next we shall see the current assets turnover ratio this ratio measures the efficiency of using current assets by the firm it is calculated by dividing net sales by current assets it indicates how many times the current assets are turned over in form of sales within a specific period of time here in this example net sales are 150000 and total current assets are 80000 so the current assets turnover ratio comes to 1.88 times the higher current assets turnover ratio the better is the ability of the company to generate sales lastly let's understand working capital turnover ratio which measures how efficiently a company is using its working capital to generate sales the formula is net sales divided by the working capital working capital is nothing but the current assets minus current liability so in this example can you find out working capital turnover ratio net sales are 150000 and working capital comes to 30000 derived by deducting current liabilities from current assets so the working capital turnover ratio comes to 5 times this denotes every currency of working capital produces revenue of 5 a high ratio indicates that the management is extremely efficient in the utilization of company's working capital in generating sales oppositely a low ratio indicates that the working capital figure is higher and business is investing too much in its account receivables and inventories to support its sales which could eventually lead to an excessive amount of bad debts or obsolete inventory write offs Working capital turnover ratio is further segregated into inventory turnover, debtors turnover and creditors turnover. These we shall discuss in the next session. So friends, these are all the activity ratios or turnover ratios that we have discussed in this session. In their formula, the numerator remains same, that is net sales, and the denominator keeps on changing depending on the type of ratio. Also, do note that in all the ratio that we discussed in today's session, in the denominator we can even consider their average figures some analysts also consider the cost of goods sold figure instead of the sales figure or cogs is taken when the sales figure is not available we hope you all have understood the activity ratios discussed in this session 
and learned how to analyze them. If you have any doubts, you can ask us in the comments below. And for various online learning courses, do check out our website. The courses are available at very affordable prices and there are also free courses available for your learnings. So friends, see you all in the next session. If you found this video useful, do like, share and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new videos uploaded on our channel. Thank you.